actually it's staff that have the right ideas, you know, and, and the good ideas. The collaborative approach that we've had across Birmingham and Solihull and, and replicated across the country has been really the key in order to um, actually uh, probably just survive through this period, really. The teams from across the um, big providers in Birmingham and Solihull have worked together uh, in that collaborative approach to actually support each other um, to get through some of the worst, um, you know, the peaks of the pandemic, which is one of the strengths of, of our system. Um, at the moment is their coordination and collaboration across across the providers all with the aim of recovery um, and support whether that's uh, staff recovery as well as performance and, and treatments. We are all in a situation where actually we've never really, well, none of us have ever been in this situation before. And um, it's almost fair game for different ideas, different approaches, et cetera. As a big ITU as well, we've had to maintain a level of capacity to support um, the ongoing pandemic because it's clearly not over. So, and then also being a big tertiary centre, uh, UHB being a big tertiary centre, um, a lot of the, the surgery, the elective surgery that would be delivered through that organisation is some of the you know biggest, the most complicated um, ac across the NHS and a lot of which would need post-operatively ITU. So one of the things that the, um, the clinical teams have done, uh, implemented really rapidly and have continued to expand it, um, is something called EPOC, Enhanced Perioperative Care, um, EPOC. So we have two EPOCs now. We have one on, on the QE site and then one on the Solihull site. And actually, the, that was a, it was a service that A, didn't exist uh, prior to COVID, um, had been discussed, but um, you know, it didn't go any further than that. And actually, in the course of what was probably a couple of months, really, we got those systems up and running and um, really pleased to say that I think it's close to it's close to 700 patients during that time have gone have post-operatively been treated through an EPOC. I think you could uh, probably honestly say that a big proportion of that 700, if we didn't have EPOC, may not have actually had an operation because they would have previously been reliant on, on ITU, which is our most constrained and precious of resource. So actually the work that the team have done there has been absolutely phenomenal um, and has really supported the the highest of priority and complexity of surgery to um, to go through there. During the pandemic, actually, referrals were continuing, but actually we were just not able to see them. And we've ended up with a very large um, backlog, for want of a better word, of um, uh, referrals of patients to see. That was a level of risk that we weren't comfortable with. We've worked really, really hard over the past probably just over 12 months really and it's real system working so uh, between uh, secondary care as UHB and then um, and the other providers and primary care working really really closely together we are basically in a system in a system or an approach now where all referrals into secondary care go through an advice and guidance system first secondary care consultants will then um, provide their specialist advice back to primary care and where possible the primary care a primary care clinician, a GP, will um, treat that patient and look after that patient in primary care. And actually, we found that to be really, really successful. Um, everyone has bought into it really, really well. Um, actually, as a system, we are the largest user of advice and guidance in the country. And, and we've been very, very lucky to speak to a number of different systems. Advice and guidance, as well as being that referral triage for us, there's a big education part that actually, by going down this system, we've seen the relationships between um, our GP colleagues and our secondary care colleagues improved dramatically and actually there's a, lots of joined up working between the two of them just to improve uh, to improve referral pathways. Uh, actually so there's a large education piece for uh, some of our GP colleagues about actually um, some, some conditions which can be managed uh, very um, easily within primary care. And um, I think fundamentally for us it was about risk that we were in a position where um, if we'd have continued with that, the previous model, um, primary care referrals, uh, a normal referral would, would go in, would be added to a waiting list. And we were, you're talking about a waiting list of actually where a patient could be waiting two years before they're seen in secondary care. Actually, the, our argument was the level of risk of, of that, for, potential risk for a patient of sitting on a waiting list without, um, 
without being seen in, in secondary care was far greater than actually um, the specialist advice from secondary care being provided to primary care. And we genuinely as a system believe that this is the future for um, for referral management. Um, actually, it really, uh, really triangulates actually the uh, referrals that definitely need to be seen in, in secondary care and um, those patients which don't need don't necessarily need to be in secondary care are provided with secondary care advice. Collaboration is obviously a, a huge part that is seen is a bit of a buzzword at the moment um, but that doesn't uh, negate the importance of, of collaboration actually and as a, as a system and with the development of ICSs, et cetera, actually it's just going to be far more important for us all. And we started to see some of the benefits of working that way in terms of um, idea generation and actually support from a wider group of um, a wider a wider team. We've seen a massive, massive um, improvement in the kind of working relationship between primary care and secondary care. But being in secondary care and being within your secondary care bubble, actually, we've learned so much from primary care, working with them, understanding the way that it, um, things work from a uh, primary care side, which perhaps we were a little bit blinkered before. So actually, we've got um, a system in place now, which is available to everyone. It's not a special tool um, that actually not only will not only will ensure that that um, GP gets a response and from secondary care about about that referral but actually where where possible and which is in most cases it's about 60 percent of the time and um, it d differs between specialty but it's about 60 percent of the time and um, actually they'll also get um really detailed um advice about how um how we would manage that how secondary care would manage that condition um a different signposts to um, for patients etc it makes perfect sense something that we've always talked about in secondary care for years for as long as i can remember um, and actually we've gone ahead and done it and actually it's been successful and now we're continuing it's not perfect it would be lying if we were to say it's perfect but actually we are now in a position where we can implement that kind of qi methodology to actually l take what we've learned and, tr and improve it it definitely improved our relationship with um, commissioner colleagues primary care all of these groups of um, of staff that you probably, you know, some people would have worked with, but actually understanding the value, the knowledge, absolutely the knowledge that some of them have and can bring to the table um, is just exceptional. And I, I, it, it's still a really difficult time. It would be lying if I said it wasn't, but um, you can definitely see the grassroots of, um, of recovery and also just of a, overall better a better system where we're all working together you're sharing knowledge because fundamentally a lot of work that's going on is, is very very similar across across all of the organizations whether that's in the community or in um, you know in the most tertiary of care everything is really really similar and you're able to put people's knowledge together people that necessarily didn't really work and um, together and just it's that kind of synergy between people and when it comes to things like um you know, bidding for money or, you know, new technology and, you know, di and digital transformation, et cetera. Um, across the different providers, everyone's got loads of good ideas and bringing them all together. You can just see the, uh, the, the massive value in that, I think, quite simply. And we went into it completely blind. We thought that this would be a good idea. This would um, help some of the risk, but we didn't no, nobody's done this before. We didn't have any of the data that we normally would to make a measured decision. And that's normally completely against anything you would ever do in the NHS. I think it's actually really important for staff morale at the moment. It's it's not a surprise that it, morale is, is, is difficult at the moment, but actually you know, people are prepared to go that extra mile and come along with this if they can see the kind of positive outcome at the end of it. Um, everything needs to be about, you know, staff, staff, staff. Actually, it's staff that have the right ideas, you know, and and the good ideas. I mean, I'm here talking to you today, but actually, my involvement in some, a lot of this is the coordination. It's actually using the knowledge, the skills of, um, you know, booking experts, our clinicians, our primary care colleagues. Actually, bringing everyone together to have that overall system view on a project, and actually how we're going to deliver it. Um, and the, that, those pooling of resources, really.